Hello everyone and welcome to Skein Spider. In today's video we're going to be making some sugar gliders. These guys are a part of a larger pattern series I'm doing on Australian animals. So far I have a platypus, a wombat, I have three quarters of a kidna, I just haven't finished the spines yet and I also plan to do more Aussie animals in the future. So if Aussie animals are something you like maybe hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of them. But for today we are going to be starting off with the sugar glider so grab your hooks and let's get started. To make a sugar glider, you're going to need both a 3 and a 3.5 millimeter hook, as well as a pair of scissors, some stitch markers, I would recommend a minimum of eight, as well as a needle, pins, stuffing, eight ply yarn in white, gray, black, and pink, as well as a pair of 12 millimeter safety eyes. So in the materials list, I did say to use a 3.5 millimeter hook and a three millimeter hook, and that's what I would recommend you do, and you'll end up with a sugar glider about this size. There you go, you can see the whole thing. However, when I was doing a little bit of cleaning up and rearranging yesterday, I ended up finding some yarn stashed away in the corner of a drawer. Don't you just love when that happens? And I am instead going to use this because it turns out I had black, grey and white in this um, particular yarn, whatever it is. So I'm going to be using a 5mm hook with this, but like I just said, the original pattern calls for a 3.5 millimeter hook as well as a three millimeter hook and eight ply yarn. But really you can make this pattern with any size hook and any weight yarn that you like. So I'm just changing that up a little bit today. We are going to begin with the body and the underbelly and they are both crocheted using the same pattern, the pattern we're about to go over now. However, what you're going to do is crochet the underbelly first. So I've crocheted mine in white and you want to make sure you do that first. So I've already done that and we're going to go on to do the body pattern which again is just the same same pattern as we used to do, make the underbelly and we're going to begin with six single crochet in a magic circle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Close that up. Round number two is going to be six increases and an increase is just two single crochet in the same stitch. Going into the first stitch from round one, I'm going to pop one single crochet in there and I'm going to go back into the same stitch and do a second single crochet. I'm going to repeat that in the second stitch. One and two. In the third stitch. And two single crochet. Fourth. fifth and lastly the sixth. I'm just going to grab my stitch marker because I'll start to use that at round three. Round three is going to be one single crochet and I'll just place my stitch marker there and increase in the next stitch and we're going to repeat this all the way around our circle. One single crochet, one increase, and then finally our sixth single crochet and our sixth increase. Round four is going to be one single crochet to begin. And then in the next stitch, we're going to do an increase. After that increase, we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase five times. One and two single crochet, increase in the next stitch. and fifth increase. 
After that fifth increase, there should be one stitch remaining in your round and we're just going to single crochet into that stitch. Round five is three single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round six begins with two single crochet and then we're going to follow these two single crochet with an increase then repeat four single crochet, one increase five times and finish your round with two more single crochet. Round seven is five single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round eight starts off with three single crochet and after that we're going to do an increase. Then repeat six single crochet, one increase five times and just finish off with three single crochet. Round nine is going to be our last round for both the body and the underbelly. And that is going to be seven single crochet, one increase repeated six times. When we're finished round nine, grab a stitch marker and secure your end. Now at the end of round nine, you should have 54 stitches in total. And if you need to, just double check that you have exactly that number because that's going to be important in the next step. For the next step, you're going to need all those stitch markers that I mentioned in the materials list. And to make this a little bit easier, you can use different color stitch markers or different shades of the same color if that's all you've got on hand. You can't say I'm not committed to my aesthetic. So what we're going to do is then place stitch markers where we need to crochet the legs. The first leg is going to be crochet between stitches one and eight. So you don't really need to place a stitch marker there because that's where we start off with. But if you want to place a stitch marker in stitch number eight, you can do that, which I might just for demonstration purposes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The second lot of stitch markers where the second leg is going to go, we're going to pop one of them in stitch 15. So we put this in stitch eight and just continue counting. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One in there. And then the second one for this second leg is going to go in stitch number 22. That was 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. For the third leg, we're going to put the first stitch marker in stitch number 30, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. The second one goes in stitch 37, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. And then for our last leg, the first stitch is going to go into stitch number 44. So that was 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. And the second one is going to go in stitch 50. 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. I'm just going to go over that again, just in case. The first stitch marker is going to be placed in stitch number eight because we're going to work the first leg from stitches one to eight. The second leg, your markers should be in stitches 15 and 22. The third leg, your stitches should be in stitch number 30 and stitch number 37. And the fourth leg, your stitch markers should be in 44 and 50. I'm just going to count around my last round just to make sure I have them all in the correct position. One, two. Okay, we are good to go. And now we can go on to crocheting the first leg. So the first leg is going to be crocheted directly from the end of round nine. So we finished round nine, we're going to crochet the first leg. But for all the other legs, we're going to then cut the yarn, rejoin it, and then crochet legs two, three, and four. To make the first leg, we're going to start off by doing eight single crochet. Three. 
Oh. Six. Seven. And eight. And the eighth single crochet is where you put that first stitch marker. For row two of the legs, we're going to chain one, turn our work and do eight single crochet again. For row three, we're going to again chain one and turn our work. And this time we're going to single crochet two together and then do six single crochet. To single crochet two together, you're going to go into the first stitch yarn over and pull through but instead of finishing the stitch you're then going to go straight into the second stitch yarn over and pull through again and at this point you should have three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over for a final time and pull through all three of those loops that's how you single crochet two together and we're just going to finish this row with the six remaining single crochet Row four is chain one and turn your work. We're going to start with another single crochet two together. Go into the first stitch, yarn over, pull through. Go straight into the second stitch, yarn over, pull through. And then with three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those. And then we're going to finish off row four by doing five single crochet. Row five is chain one turn your work, single crochet two together and then four single crochet. Row six, chain one, turn your work. We're going to single crochet two together and then do three single crochet. Row seven, chain one and turn your work. Then we're going to single crochet two together and then do two single crochet. Row eight, chain and turn. We're going to single crochet two together and then do one single crochet. Row nine, which is going to be the final row for our legs, is, our, is a chain one, turn your work, and then two single crochet. After row nine of the leg, we're just going to cut a short tail and this tail just needs to be long enough that we can either work over it later or leave it in to hide it. Pull up with your hook. And then what I like to do at this point is just put in a stitch marker in this leg. Just so I know that this is the first leg that I crochet because we're going to line it up properly with the underbelly. For the remaining three legs, we're going to use the exact same pattern that we did for round one. But for each of those, we're going to join the yarn first. You're going to grab your hook and we're going to insert it into the first stitch marker of leg number two, which should be stitch 15. Pop it in there. You're going to bring in your yarn, line it up behind your hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through. And then we're just going to slip stitch to join. This slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch in the round, so our first single crochet of row one is going to be worked into this same stitch. And we're just going to repeat the same pattern we did here. We're going to do row one, eight single crochet, row two, chain one and turn your work, and so on and so forth. So there'll be a timestamp down in the description for the start of the leg pattern. So you can just press on that and go back there and follow the written pattern again if you need to. And then what we're going to do is repeat the same process for legs three and four. When you finish leg number four, what you're going to do next is going to depend on what piece you're crocheting. If you've crocheted the underbelly, at this point you're going to cut a short tail like we've done for the previous three legs and then go on to crochet the body. However, if you're up to crocheting your second piece, which is the body piece, you're going to leave your fourth leg attached to the hook, so I'm not going to cut this yarn. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my underbelly and I'm going to flip it over so the right sides of my stitches are facing down, so the wrong sides here are facing up. 
and I'm going to place this underneath the body piece. So I'm going to lay that flat. I'm going to place my body piece on top of that. And then when it's in place like this, the right sides of my stitches of each piece should be on the outside. So I've got my right sides of the stitches of my body piece on the top here. And if I flip it over, my right sides of the underbelly are still on the outside. What we're going to do at this point is single crochet these two pieces together. However, if you would like, you can grab your stitch markers and just join the two pieces together. I find it helps to keep the two pieces in place while you're crocheting. Once all that's done, we're going to begin single crocheting the pieces together with the ends at the end of each tail. So there should be one for the underbelly piece and one for the body piece. I plan to work over those. So I'm going to line this tail end up along the turn this over along the side of the leg here and just crochet over that but if you would prefer what you can do before you pin your two or use stitch markers to put your two pieces together you can weave these ends in through the backs of your stitches so if that's easier for you do that first but i'm just going to work over them so all we're going to do is single crochet in at the end of each row and we're going to go through both pieces both the body piece and the underbelly piece from there, we're going to go across the stitches from round nine. We're going to work back up the other side of the leg, across the top, and then down the other side, and so on until we do the whole thing. However, we're also going to be stopping at about three quarters of the way to add our stuffing. So let's begin by going into the side here of row nine from the leg. And I'm going to go through the body, take this out now, and then I'm going out through the same stitch in the underbelly piece. So I'm inserting my hook through there and I want to work over this end. And at this point, I'm going to single crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through both pieces, the underbelly and the body, and then finish my single crochet. I'm then going to go into the end of row eight of the leg, out of the corresponding stitch in the leg, the underbelly leg. <laughs> And the single crochet, number seven, six. Once you've single crocheted down the side of the first leg, we're then going to single crochet across the bottom here. I'm going through the stitches of both the body and the underbelly still. Once you've worked all those free stitches, we're then going to go back up the other side of the leg. Once you've worked through row nine, we're then going to do two stitches across the top because we finished each leg with two single crochet left. And then once you've done those two single crochet across the top, we're just going to work down the other side of the leg and continue around the rest of the body until we get to about this point. So we've still got a little bit of gap in which we can add the stuffing. I'm just going to stop here. I've left the opposite side of the first leg that we crocheted down. I've left that open. So I'm going to insert my stuffing here. With this sugar glider, you're going to stuff the legs only lightly and then put a little bit more stuffing in the body here, but we're not going to add too much because we don't want our sugar glider being too bulky. When that's done, we're just going to finish crocheting the two pieces together. And what I'm also going to do is put a stitch marker back in leg one here, just so I remember which one it is. So this is leg four here, which makes this one leg one. I'm just going to finish off crocheting.
When you're finished, we're just going to slip stitch into the original single crochet that we did. And I'm going to leave a tail that I can then weave into the body to secure. And that is how we crochet the body. Now we're going to go on and crochet the head. For the head, we're going to need three colors. You're going to need pink and also the body color and the underbelly color. I'm going to be starting with this pink, which I'm doubling up on because when I found the white, gray and black yarn, I didn't have any pink that was the right size. So I'm just doubling up on my eight ply here. So I'm going to begin the head. We're actually starting with the nose, which is why I'm doing it in pink. And we're starting with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is going to be one single crochet, one increase repeated three times. And then at the end of this round, we're going to be changing color to the underbelly color. I'm about to do the third and the final increase for round two. I'm going to go into the last stitch and do the first single crochet of the increase. Let's try that again. There we go. And then on the second one, I'm going to be changing color. So I'm going to go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through until I have two loops on my hook. And at this point, I'm going to bring in my next color, which is the underbelly color. And for me, that's white. I'm going to line that white yarn up behind the stitch and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through the two loops on my hook in that. So at this point, I'm just going to cut my pink yarn. I might get rid of this tail too while I'm at it. And then round three, which is going to be crocheted in white, is going to be two single crochet, one increase repeated three times. And I'm going to be working over both of these ends to secure them. Round four is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. For round five, we're going to begin with six single crochet. And after that six single crochet, we're going to do one single crochet, one increase three times. One first increase, two second increase, and then three and third increase. After that third increase, there should be six stitches left in our round and we're going to single crochet into all six of those. Round six is 21 single crochet. Round seven begins with six single crochet, and then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase three times, and then finish off the round with six single crochet. Round eight is 24 single crochet. Round nine begins with six single crochet, and then we're going to repeat one single crochet, one increase six times, and finish off the round with another six single crochet. Eight. 
At the end of round nine, there should now be 30 stitches in your round, and then both rounds 10 and 11 are each 30 single crochet. At the end of round 11, we're going to change colour again, and this time we're changing to the body colour. Go into the last stitch, yarn over, that pull through, so you have two loops on your hook, and then bring in your new colour. We're going to line that up behind the white, or the underbelly colour, whatever colour you're using. Yarn over, pull through to finish the single crochet, and then we're going to go on to round 12, which is also 30 single crochet. Round 13 is also 30 single crochet. Round 14 is three single crochet and a decrease repeated six times. We're going to begin with the first three single crochet, two and three, and then we're going to do a decrease. To do that, we're going to go under the front loops of the next two stitches, and the front loop is this part of the stitch here, the one that's closest to you. Under the first front loop, under the second front loop, you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those front loops. And at this point, you should have two loops on your hook. We're then going to yarn over again and pull through both of those front loops. We're going to repeat that five more times, or six in total. At the end of round 14, we're just going to stop and secure our ends, and we're going to insert the safety eyes. If you look at the face from side on, you can see that it curves upwards, and this is going to be the top of the head. So when we insert the safety eyes, and we're going to insert them between rounds 7 and 8, so I'm going to count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You want to make sure that the eyes sit on sort of either side of that curve because we made the curve by doing a repeat of one single crochet one increase three times and then two single crochet one increase three times then one single crochet one increase six times in rounds six seven no five seven and nine so they want to be at the top here and then i'm just going to insert whoops And I'm just going to look at my little sugar glider's face from front on, and they seem fairly even, so I'm going to leave my eyes there. Then you can pop the backs on after that. And once that's done, we are going to add a little bit of stuffing. After that, we're going to continue on with round 15, which is going to be two single crochet, one decrease, repeated six times. Round 16 is one single crochet, one decrease, repeated six times. After round 16, I'm just going to stop and add a little bit more stuffing. When you finish stuffing, we're going to complete our last round, which is round 17, and that is just six decreases. When you're finished, we're going to leave a long tail because we're going to use this to sew the head onto the body. But before we do that, we're going to close up this hole. So for that, you'll need to grab your needle. And then what we're going to do is go under the front loops of the last six stitches. Starting from behind the front loop, you're going to push your needle under it and forward. And we're going to repeat that on all six of them. One, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Pull on the yarn so that hole closes up. And then for now, we're just going to leave that as is because as I said before, we're going to use this end to sew the head onto the body. But before we do that, we are going to go on and crochet the tail. To make the tail, we're going to start with our black yarn and round one is six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Rounds three through to 15 are each going to be 12 single crochet. At the end of round 15, we're going to switch colors to our body color. So for me, that is my gray. And we're going to switch colors in the same way we did in the head. Let me bring in this. And then round 16 is going to be four single crochet, one decrease repeated twice. At the end of round 16, I'm just going to stop and then add some stuffing to the bottom of my tail. After round 16, we should now have 10 stitches in total in our round, and then rounds 17 through to 26 are each going to be 10 single crochet. When you've finished round 26, we're just going to add a little bit more stuffing. And then we're going to continue on with round 27, which is three single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. And then rounds 28 through to 32 are each going to be eight single crochet. When you've finished round 32, we're just going to slip stitch and you'll want to leave a tail for sewing. And then the final thing we're going to do with the tail is just to finish adding any remaining stuffing. The last pieces that we're going to crochet are the ears and for that we're going to be using our black yarn. And we're going to begin by putting six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. And then round three, which is going to be our final round, is just 12 single crochet. To finish off, what I'm going to be doing is single crocheting the sides of this piece together, but this step is optional. You don't have to do it. it. I just think it makes it a little bit easier to sew on. So what we're going to do, so how I'm going to do this, if you would like to follow along as well, is to fold my piece in half. So I'm just pressing it flat. I'm going to go into stitch number one, and then I'm going to go straight out of the last stitch, stitch number 12. After I've gone through both of those stitches, I'm going to single crochet. And then I'm going to repeat that all the way along for six stitches. So I'm going to go into stitch number two, out of stitch number 11, single crochet. Stitch three, out stitch 10, single crochet, and just continue on down. And then all we need to do is leave a tail so we can sew this on. 
Before we begin assembling our sugar glider, what we're going to do is actually add some toes to the ends of each of the legs. For that, you're going to need your smaller hook size. So if you are following the materials as listed in the materials list, you're going to use your three millimeter hook. But because I ended up using a thicker yarn and a larger hook size, I'm dropping down to a four millimeter hook. What we're going to do is work with the two stitches that are at the end of the feet. It doesn't really matter which stitch number you use, just pick the two that are at the end of the legs. And you're going to insert your hook into the first one. We're going to join the yarn with a slip stitch. So I'm going to pull my yarn through and then join with a slip stitch. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Working back down the chain, we're going to do two slip stitches, starting in the second chain from the hook. One slip stitch, and then we're going to do a slip stitch in the next chain. And then we're going to slip stitch back into the base of the leg, so where we started from. Oh, come on. There we go. And then we're going to do that same thing in the next stitch down, so our second stitch at the end of the leg, but we're going to do it twice because we're doing three toes at the end of each leg, but we're only working in two stitches. If you would like, you can work across three stitches, putting one toe in each, but I think this looks a little bit too spread out, so I'm going to be sticking with two stitches. So I'm going to slip stitch across into my next stitch. I'm going to chain three, two, three. I'm going to do two slip stitches down the chain, starting in the second chain from my hook. One and two. Then for this stitch, this stitch on the leg, I'm going to go back into the same stitch, slip stitch again, and then repeat the toe pattern. So I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, slip stitch twice down the chain. And then to finish off, I'm just going to slip stitch back into the same stitch on the leg. So finishing off there, I'm going to leave a tail. This tail, I'm just making it long enough that I can weave it into the body. And that is how you do the toes. I'm going to repeat that on all the other legs. And what I want to do is I want to keep my stitch marker in this one because this was leg number one and I want to remember that. What I plan to do is keep the two toes in the one stitch on the inside of my sugar glider. So for this leg here, the second leg, I'm going to do two toes in this stitch here and then one here. Whereas this one, I'm going to do one on the outside and then one that's on the inside of the body. So that's how I'm going to do that. You can choose how you'd like to do yours, but we're going to do the same pattern on the end of each leg. When you finish crocheting all the toes, we're just going to take a moment to weave in all these ends. When you've finished weaving in the ends from those toes, we're going to start attaching all the pieces. We're first going to put on the tail and we're going to attach that between the first and fourth leg because that's a little bit smaller than the gap between the second and the third legs, which is larger to accommodate the head. So we're going to grab the tail and all we're going to do is sew that directly above the body here. So these stitches are where we single crocheted the body to the underbelly. And we're just going to pop that on right there and sew it on. And then when that's sewn on, we're just going to weave this end in. Now 
Next, we're going to sew on the head. And to do that, first we need to weave this tail end into the correct position. Thread the tail end through your needle, and then we're just going to weave the needle out through the bottom of the head to between rounds 14 and 15. Pull on that firmly. And then what you're going to do is place the head down in between legs two and three. You might need to adjust the position from where you're going to start sewing. So I'm moving mine across a little bit. And then we're going to sew the head down in a straight line across the stitches here. Once you've sewn across that straight line, you can leave the head as it is, but if you'd like to make it a little bit more secure, you can put a couple of additional stitches higher up. So sort of sewing in a triangle shape like this, which is what I'm going to do. And then when we're done sewing on the head, we're going to do the same thing and just weave the tail end in through the body. And then the last thing we need to do, sewing wise, is to attach the ears. So I'm going to set mine two rounds back from where we changed to the body color. Make sure your ears are sitting symmetrically on the head and when they are, you can sew those on as well. At this point, all our sewing is done. We can take this out now, I no longer need that. All we're going to do is add the markings. So you can add the markings in any sort of configuration you want, but I'm just going to replicate the one I've already made. I'm going to do a stripe on the back here, a stripe on the forehead, and add some black around the eyes. And to do that, I'm going to grab my black yarn. I'm actually using my acrylic yarn, my acrylic eight ply yarn this time. And to make these, all you're going to do is cut a length of whatever color yarn you're using. And then you're just going to insert your needle into the body or whichever part you're currently putting the details on. And you want to pull this yarn through until you leave a little tail hanging on the outside. So this tail just needs to be long enough that you can tie it off later. Then make the detail in whatever shape and whatever length you like. And then all you're going to do once you've got your shape down is fill it in. I'm also going to be using a felting needle. So I'm going to use that to create the shape on all the pieces I'm doing. When you're finished, we're going to tie off our end. Now this isn't super necessary if you needle felted, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway if you just filled in the gap with yarn. You're going to weave your needle out through the original stitch we worked into. So make sure you go out the same stitch. It's a bit long, I'll get rid of that. And then you're just going to tie the two ends off. Cut away any excess yarn and then push that knot back into the body. And that is how we're going to add all the details. I'm going to add another stripe on the head here. And I'm also going to do some black around the eyes. When it comes time to doing that, what I would recommend you do is grab some pins and mark out the shape that the eye detail is going to take. 
So I'm going to go around the base and the top of the eye and then extend it out like I have done with my little one here. So that's all you need to do for that. Alrighty, I've just finished the first eye, but I have about 2% of battery life left. So I'm going to stop it there for today. To do the second eye, you're just going to repeat the process we've done on all the other parts. But when that's done, we are finished. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you all again next week with a new pattern.